Welcome back to Monroe Live. We are here at the North American International Auto Show and we have Mark Trosel, who is VP of Design for Ram Truck. Yes. yes. And this is an electrified Ram Truck. Correct. Um, now, just an overview of what this truck is meant to be in the market for Ram uh, as a company. What can you really say about it as an overall before we get into some of the styling and some of the different design choices? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, this really is, this is our first uh, our first electrified uh, Ram truck. Um, we're really, really excited by it. Obviously, electrification is you know something that's that's coming strong for for um, our our comp competitors as well. Uh, and so we've you know we've worked really hard on on trying to make sure that we have the right Ram ingredients for for our electrified truck. Okay. Now I've worked with FCA, Stellantis, <laughs> Chrysler, and Dodge uh, for quite a few years mostly within interior styling. Okay. So okay. I've been in the studio, I've worked through that process, I've seen how they go about making decisions. Now, from an interior perspective, I have to say that FCA, Stellantis, Dodge, Chrysler, has given a lot more to the customer than the competitors do in whichever price point that they include. So we will look into some of the interior, but in speaking about the exterior, there is a unique question that I wanna ask directly to you, VP of Styling. You went from a traditional truck to now moving into an electric vehicle. Now, some people interpret that saying, all right, well now we have to design an electric vehicle. We have to design a theme that is meant for an electric vehicle. But yet some people are more comfortable with a traditional truck, especially a truck buyer. They want to be within a comfort zone. What type of freedoms do you feel that you had in going from the traditional gas ICE vehicle to an electric vehicle. What type of styling differences or changes did you feel comfortable with for this? Yeah, so it really it really started uh, at CES when we introduced the Ram Rev concept vehicle. And that vehicle really was our manifesto for the Ram brand and where we want to head um, merging electrification with our with our truck. And so, you know, speaking to our customer, understanding, you know, what are their needs, what are their wants? Um, obviously the truck is a tool and we want to make sure that we still deliver to our customer the things that they want from, from their truck and, and our Ram products. So we took some of the styling cues, some of the functions that we have on there, uh, and we merged them with, with our new Ram uh, Rev uh, production vehicle as well. You'll see that in the face of it, um, uh, obviously the frunk, some of the interior things that you mentioned as well, but it's really, it's, it's starting for us to, to merge those two together. And, and we feel that um, we're giving our customer what they want. They still want a truck. They want something that is familiar to them, but it's, it's leaning towards now the, the new drivetrains to it and the technology that comes along with it. So as a designer, uh, it's been a great opportunity to work, you know, with those freedoms of, of having a frunk, having a, a more space to design, more things to give our customer. Uh, so it's been, it's been an exciting process. So I have another question, and I don't want this to seem like it's a negative question because it's not. There's a certain amount of dollars that we want to put into a vehicle that we are manufacturing that we are then going to want to sell for a profit. Now, because I know that the interior specifically, the studio and marketing, the studio and marketing normally get together in launching the vehicle. Studio has their theme, they have their concept, they have their design, and they fight to keep that design through all the development process. Marketing comes in and marketing has check boxes. They look at all the competitors and see how many check boxes the competitors have checked out and say, well, in order for us to be competitive, we have to have this, this, this feature, this feature. Well, now that we have this electric drive chain, that is a lot of cost. That is a lot of dollars that we are now putting on this vehicle. Did you feel that you had to restrain yourself from certain features or styling elements in order to be within a full vehicle price point? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a really good question. And, and I think what makes us special is that, you know, you mentioned, you know, engineering and marketing and, and the style team, but we are one. And so our goals in, in taking customer feedback really are the same. So we work together to make sure that even though we have costs to manage, uh, it, you know, uh, engineering, manufacturing, all the things that go along with it, we make sure that we are delivering to our customer what they expect and, and in a lot of cases exceeding that. Uh, do we have to you know, be smart and efficient about it? Absolutely, but we try to make sure that we those boxes are checked yeah. because we know that's what our customer expects from us. 
All right, so being integral into the design process and knowing that when we design a vehicle, normally it's two to three years in advance that we are working over every detail. When you see a part, if you see a door, you see a complete door. However, almost all of the effort is in the edges, is in the transitions. How am I going between the center and the door? What is my breakup? How am I putting on that ORVM or the rear view mirror? How is that going to integrate into the body? What type of trim? Is there anything about the style of this vehicle that you particularly want to point out of something that maybe was a headache for your team, <laughs> something that you're very, very proud of, but the average consumer may not notice? Do you have anything? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, I think if I've done my job well, um, none of that will ever show up. And, and um, my job is really to take that emotion that, that we as designers draw and we sketch and we create the theme that, that we fall in love with. And, and how do we translate that into a production vehicle given you know, all the manufacturing, the cost, as you talked about, how do I still take the emotion that was in that piece of art and, and translate it to something that you know, our customer gets out of and wants to look back at. Um, that to me uh, is the fun of what I get to do. And, and th obviously there are, there are um, you know, potholes along the way that we, we have to, to navigate, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, we've, we've kept the essence of that, the, the essence of the Ram Revolution concept vehicle and what Ram is all about. So to me, I think, I, I think it's, it's, it's held together well. If, if there's an area that I'm particularly proud of on this truck, uh, it's certainly the face of it. Um, we have what we call our tuning fork uh, lighting on it, you know, very strong identity. It has our new RAM uh, logo on it as well, which represents the electrification of, of Ram going forward. So those are things that I am proud about because that face of the truck is something that, you know, customers, you know, that's what they, they it resonates with them. So in good mechanical design and also in good surface design, if it is a good design, honestly, you should not notice it. There should not be one thing that just sticks out and says, that is a feature that I see. When you have a good design, good mechanical design, it almost should seem natural. It almost should seem common sense. The vehicle as a whole works together and no one feature really detracts or raises its hand and says, hey, I right. am here. So when I look at this vehicle, looking at the styling, just going along the side, look at how clean everything is. There's nothing that's too gaudy or ostentatious, but yet I, I, I can notice the differences in the cab angles, uh, in the window trim and the overall, all of those things, the designer has to sketch. The engineer has to figure out how do I stamp that? How do I get the window tracks to work properly? And work within the design, work within that overall shape. To me, it almost seems amazing that any vehicle can ever get accomplished or ever <laughs> be built. Because I have been in meetings in studio with Stellantis that we have literally had 40 people in a meeting representing many different um, companies or different produ uh, products across the vehicle, literally fighting over a millimeter. <laughs> it's like, how do we actually move this forward? So yeah. to me, every vehicle that we launch is a miracle. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah you're right. There's all those disciplines coming together, everyone has uh, you know, their own objectives and in, in working together to try and execute it, as you say, in a seamless, cohesive statement and still keeping the essence and the purity, I guess, of, of what you know, we sketch and draw. Um, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a process that uh, uh, is exciting and, and fun at the same time. So uh, a power, 100% you know, power frunk on it. Um, obviously, you know, as I mentioned, this is a, a great way for us to, you know, as designers, to take you know, the opportunity of this space uh, and as an industrial designer, how can we give the customer you know, more function to it as well? So uh, you, know, you can see our, our cargo net, we've got power outlets, we've got lighting in here as well. Um, you know, we've, we've styled the, the under pad as well. So who decided to take up the time and stylize and design the tie downs? You know, the way I, I, I everything to me that a customer can see or touch um, it, we want to put the same love into that as we do the, the, the body side or the interior. So 
Um, you know, the tie downs are one that, that you know, we take great pride in, in sketching those and making sure they're functional. If you are making a feature that truly is just a mechanical feature, it does not have to look generic. Right. Other than the finish on this, it costs the exact same amount to make a stylized, nice looking feature as it does to make a bland generic feature. That's a great point, great point, right? It is, it, it, you're absolutely right. You know, design is somewhat free. If you're going to make something, why not put the love and the effort into making it have, have the right flavor to it, have the right feel, have the right function to it. Okay. I'm looking at all of the plastic trim around this. I don't believe, oh, maybe this is painted for the components. It's, it's all very uniform. Um, it's all very clean. Whoever had to design this seal with the twist, I, I feel sad for that. <laughs> uh, whether that was able to be natural or somehow form. Um, but the frunk is a decent space, uh, decently large. I like the cargo net, um, which I don't know if I've seen in a frunk in a couple of the others that we reviewed. Uh, the tie downs, I always question the tie downs. I always question why they need to be for, specifically the ones in the front. What are those there for? But that's just my own opinion. Yeah. Normally, if I'm putting something in here and I want to secure it, I'm going to be pulling it back. I'm not pulling forward. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is our, our tungsten model. And this uh, is what we call indigo and sea salt. This is specific to the, to the tungsten model. We have a new 14 and a half inch screen. Uh, we also have uh, our new uh, custom, or our passenger side uh, screen as well. So it allows our customer to watch uh, movies, uh, you know, interact with the navigation system without uh, obviously uh, interrupting the, the driver. Uh, the driver, when he looks over, the, the screen has a film on it that uh, doesn't allow them to see it. So it's a, it's a great safety feature as well. Uh, Klipsch audio system in it. Um, really trying to take the, the Ram truck premium level to the, to the next level. So when you're looking at all the surfaces in this vehicle, I mean, that is real cut and sew um, across that IP top pad. Leather um, wrapped, yes. Leather indigo, uh, I do believe that's Botter who makes that leather, I'm quite certain. Now it's weird that you call this one the tungsten model because that thread is not tungsten. <laughs> True, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> Which is a color that, um, Stellantis has in their inventory. Yeah. But look at that door. But the materials, as you point out, it's, you know, the, the customer, you know, interacting with the door panels and the things that they touch, uh, you know, just having that, that soft quality to them that, you know, uh, inviting things that makes you want to touch them as well. And just, uh, you know, the, the accent colors of it, it really, uh, you know, we're really proud of how the, the, this model turned out. I mean, just the complication of this armrest. A wrapped portion, a wrapped portion. That is also coated or wrapped in some way. Uh, this bezel being inset, I mean, providing that breakup, making these two separate islands. That is a lot of expense, um, but it's a lot of detail. Right. Um, the quilted insert in this, I mean, normally this right here would actually be a continuation of the film or some sort of a faux wood grain, but to have this as a sewn quilted insert, I mean, that is really, well, for me, I always talk about cost. That's expensive, um, <laughs> which again, in my opinion, Stellantis, uh, Dodge, Chrysler, puts a lot of money into these surfaces that the customer touches. Um, that is very unique. Some people may think that it's overdone or um, a little much, but <laughs> I know that I have paid $15,000 more for a vehicle just because of my comfort in the interior. Um, my comfort matters to me more than the efficiency, uh, but that is the type of customer I am yeah. and many customers are the same way. So, well, thank you very, very much for my speaking pleasure. with us and showing us this beautiful, beautiful truck. Another electric vehicle that eventually maybe we will be tearing apart at Monroe. <laughs> so thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Great talking.